Why is the universe so flat? Over time, the curvature of the universe should grow and grow. So in the last 13.7 billion years or so, you'd think that the universe would have grown into a pretty curved shape. But when we measure the spatial curvature of the observable universe, we basically find that it looks completely flat. This apparent paradox between what we expect to see and what we actually find when we do the measurements is known as the flatness problem. And it's one of the three main reasons we believe that right after the Big Bang, the universe experienced an insane growth spurt known as cosmic inflation. During this time, the volume of the universe increased by a factor of 10 to the power of 78, and it only took a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a second to do this. This is absolutely crazy to think about, but this period of inflation is all justified by the problems that it can solve. Accepting that the universe acted like a popcorn kernel right after its birth lets us avoid some famous problems with the traditional Big Bang picture. The most famous of these are considered to be the classical problems of the Big Bang model, and they're known as the horizon problem, the flatness problem, and the monopole problem. We have a separate video talking about each of these problems in turn and how inflation solves it, but in this video, we're gonna focus on the flatness problem. This problem relates to explaining why, when we measure the curvature of the entire observable universe, we find it to be essentially completely flat, at least within the precision of our measurements. Remember that when I say flat, I mean flat in three spatial directions. So while it's easy to picture a flat piece of paper, it's more like we're standing on the piece of paper and the third spatial dimension, upwards, is also completely without curvature. There are two other possibilities for the shape of the universe. The first is that the universe has what's called positive curvature, and this would be like living on the surface of a sphere. This is often called a closed universe, because if you were to walk in one direction for long enough, you'd get back to where you started. The other option is that the universe has what's called negative curvature, and the famous example of this sort of shape would be the surface of a saddle. This, like a flat universe, is called an open universe, because it's infinitely large, and if you keep walking in one direction, you'll never get back to where you started. So, the universe should have one of these three shapes, or at least the 3D equivalents of these shapes I just described. But how do you even measure the curvature of the entire observable universe? It all starts with the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB, which is the oldest light we can see in the universe. A temperature map of the whole CMB looks like this, where the redder spots denote hotter points, and the bluer spots denote colder points. Don't be fooled though, the differences between the temperatures of these different spots are absolutely tiny. The hottest red spots are only about 0.001 Kelvin hotter than the coldest blue spots. That's a difference of less than 1 in 10 to the power of 5, or 100,000. In reality, the CMB is almost a perfectly uniform temperature, and it took an incredibly sensitive satellite, the Planck satellite, to measure the fluctuations shown here. However, it's precisely these hot and cold spots that give us one method for measuring the curvature of the universe. We know the size of the brightest hot and cold spots on the CMB. Their size is given by how far sound waves could have traveled in the early universe by the time the CMB was released. And we can use this, along with some fairly simple geometry, to calculate the curvature of the universe. But how? Let's start with a couple of cool things about triangles. Admittedly, that's not a sentence I say often. We all know that the angles in a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. Or do they? This is certainly true if we draw our triangle on a flat piece of paper, but it's actually not true if we draw a triangle on the surface of a sphere. You can see here that the triangle does look a bit sort of wavy, and maybe the angles do look a little bit funny, but it's actually super easy to find an example where it becomes very obvious that they don't add up to 180 degrees. Imagine we're about to draw a triangle on this sphere. Let's start by drawing the bottom of the triangle along the equator of the sphere. At one end, make a right angle and draw a line straight up to the top of the sphere, or the North Pole. At the other end of the line on the equator, let's do exactly the same thing. Make a right angle and draw a line straight up to the North Pole. These lines meet at the North Pole, so we have a shape that's three sides and three corners. Definitely a triangle in my books. However, if we think about the angles in this triangle, it's kind of obvious that they have to add up to more than 180 degrees. This is because at one end of the equator, we've got a right angle, which is 90 degrees, and at the other end of our line on the equator, we've also got a right angle, another 90 degrees. So just in these two angles, we've got 180 degrees already. No matter how large or small the angle is at the top of our triangle, adding these three up is gonna give us something bigger than 180 degrees. The surface of a sphere has positive curvature and drawing a triangle on any shape with positive curvature 
always gives you angles that add up to more than 180 degrees. Similarly, if we were to draw a triangle on a shape with negative curvature, like the saddle we saw earlier, then the angles in that triangle will always add up to less than 180 degrees. These are all 2D shapes, the surface of a sphere and a saddle, but triangles work exactly the same way in three dimensions. This actually gives us a neat way of measuring the curvature of the universe. Let's just draw a triangle in the universe, measure all the angles, add them all up, and see what we get. Whatever number we get will tell us the curvature of the universe. However, for this to actually work, the triangle we need to draw has to be absolutely massive. Like, bigger than the Earth, bigger than the solar system, bigger than the Milky Way even. And this is exactly where the spots on the CMB come in. As we said earlier, we know the size of the bright spots on the CMB, and we actually know how far away they are as well. The CMB is the furthest away thing we can possibly see, and it's about 46 billion light years away. This means we know the length of all three sides of an enormous triangle. Using these side lengths and some basic trigonometry, we can calculate the size of the angle that's closest to us. And in theory, if the universe was completely flat, this angle should be exactly one degree. If the universe has some curvature, this angle will be different than one degree. It'll be less than one degree if the universe has negative curvature, and it will be more than one degree if the universe has positive curvature. When we actually do the calculation, we find the angle to be exactly one degree, at least to within the precision that we can do these measurements. This means that the universe is either exactly flat or it's extremely close to exactly flat. So the universe is probably completely flat, but why is this even surprising? Why is this a big deal at all? Well, if the universe has been completely flat forever, it should stay that way, and this isn't a big deal. However, there's absolutely no reason for us to expect that the universe did actually start off as completely flat. Indeed, the initial moments of the universe were probably governed by quantum mechanics, which is famously a bit random in nature. So we could also expect the initial shape of the universe to be random too. Any initial curvature should then grow and grow, so the fact that we see a completely flat universe now is a bit strange. That is, unless we introduce inflation into our cosmological history. A period of time where the expansion of the universe accelerates exponentially and literally dilutes away any curvature that the universe was born with. Any shape is flat if you look at it on a small enough scale. And whatever random geometry the universe had, inflation just takes the flat bit and blows it up enough to account for our entire observable universe. Take this circle, expand it a lot, and now the observable bit looks flat. Same for this piece of popcorn. Expand it enough, and now it looks flat to us. Same for this shape. Expand it, now it looks flat. Sure, on a scale much larger than we can see, it still is curved, and the universe might be the same. But the small patch we can see looks flat. We don't know the initial shape of the universe, and inflation offers us zero insight into that. But it does give us a reason for it not to be weird for the universe we see today to look flat. Expanding these shapes like this does make them look flat, but it doesn't really tell us why inflation has to happen so quickly. Why can't the universe just expand slowly for much longer than we thought and still give us a flat universe? A better example to show you why the speed is important is rolling a ball along a tabletop. If you want to roll a ball in a straight line, which represents a flat universe, then it's much easier to do it if you roll the ball fast. If you do it too slowly, any small deviation from exactly straight grows very quickly and you immediately leave a flat universe and gain curvature. But if you roll the ball much faster, you don't have to be exactly flat for the ball to move in a pretty much straight line. So here you can see why the speed is important. Move too slowly and you deviate from flatness immediately. Move very fast and you stay there for a long, long time. Check out the other videos on this channel to see how inflation solves the other classical problems with the Big Bang model and subscribe for more cosmology videos too. Leave a comment if you think there's some cool cosmology thing we should learn together and I'll see if I can make a video about it. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.